Greg Alinsky. First off, Greg, NCAA tournament. Is the NCAA tournament the greatest tournament in all wrestling? Yeah, it really is. I mean, I'll tell you, the intensity and the excitement that, that sort of develops over these three days at the NCAAs, and as you're watching the stories unfold, and, and, and if you've wrestled uh, or if you've done any sort of combat sport, you know that there is an awful lot of energy and effort that goes into preparing yourself to, to get to this platform, right? So now we're at this final platform in college, and to go there and sort of watch these guys put it all out in the line is, uh, I, I don't think there's a finer uh, sport, you know, that, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but I don't think there's a finer sport to, to watch that. Not a whole lot of four-time NCAA All-Americans walking around that tournament. You were one of them. You know, looking at that tournament, how intense it is. You know, you've had some heartbreaking losses there. You're in the national finals twice. You're third as a senior. Looking at that and, and reflecting on your career, do you do it every time you go back and you're thinking like, man, I could have just won a title. Do you ever think uh, about that? You know, I, fortunately, I had a, a, a fairly decent career post-college. And, uh, you know, going to you know, 92 and, uh, you know, being the alternate on the, the U.S. team and winning the U.S. Open, which is kind of the highest thing we could do, you know, once you're done with, uh, once you're done with college. So um, I got a little bit of that uh, angst, you know, out of me, uh, I suppose. But, you know, no doubt, um, you, know, you, you know, there are moments where you think, you know, I'm the number one seed and I lose to a guy that you know wasn't and you know how, you know how does that happen and what it really does I think ultimately at the end of the day and you see it I mean we see it you know a number 11 seed in the finals right against uh, you know uh, I forget what weight class Kindig versus Zertzis is crazy there, there you go right so I mean it happens all the time and and so what it teaches you is that as in life and wrestling, you know, there are moments of nerves and pressure and uh, uh, outside factors and forces that, that all of us feel and all of us can't run from or escape from. And some, you know, people can sharpen that skill over the course of their four years in college and get it right. And, um, and, and some are exceptional at it, you know, these three-time national champs and two-time and, and four-time national champs. But the reality is, is that, you know, the parallels of wrestling and the parallels of life are really, you know, amazingly similar. Coming out of one of the greatest high school programs in the history of high school programs, St. Edward, what is that like being a, an adjunct? Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, the, uh, you know, the history of St. Ed's, I think we've got 32 consecutive NCAA All-Americans uh, from St. Ed's. We had seven kids in this uh, tournament, in this NCAA from St. Ed's that had qualified to be here. Uh, in Oklahoma, and um, we had uh, one All-American, so it gives you the, you know, the sense of the, uh, the, the uh, synthesizing that goes on from having seven to only one making it, but um, Nick Solzer was a uh, place fourth, um, and uh, you know, it's great. St. Ed's was an outstanding experience. Uh, we won 38 or so national, uh, I'm sorry, state championships, I think 11 national championships over the last, you know, 55 years or so. So, you know, Howard Ferguson is uh, one of the people that we credit as one of the finest coaches in the in the country that got that started. And um, it's been a great experience. And the kids there are respectful and hardworking. And, you know, really, uh, it's been a blast to be back now and working with them. You know, you translated wrestling, you know, being an Edsman, State College, four-time All-American for Penn State, into business. Yeah. How easy was that transition for you personally to being a successful wrestler to a successful person who does business? Yeah, you know, look, I, I attribute really everything that I've been able to, to accomplish in business as a direct result of all the things I've learned in wrestling. Um, you know, was it easy, you know, it, it, you know, to be at the top of wrestling or at the top of business? Neither one of those paths have been easy. I mean, but you understand how to put one step in front of the other and how to correct your mistakes and micromanage yourself in such a way that you, you know, that you adjust and, and, and you know, and, and improve yourself and, and try to be, uh, you know, retrospective about your actions to be better, you know, every day. And I think that that's what wrestling teaches you. And then ultimately that carried forward in, in business. And so it was very useful. Penn State now. I mean, you, you have gone, you went from one great team to another, you know, obviously, you know, you went from St. Edward yeah. to Penn State. And Penn State wasn't then what they are now. How does that make you feel as alum and now what Coach Sanderson's been able to do and his staff with the guys they have, you know, four straight national titles? What's that like for you as yeah. well? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, you know, the enthusiasm is evident by the fact that, you know, we've got thousands and thousands of fans at the NCAAs uh, that you saw you know, this weekend. 
Uh, but it, you know, just to be you know, um, to, to be part of you know sort of the, the, the beginning days where you know we took third you know twice and I think second once so during the four years I was there so we were close but never really you know, we were always one or two guy, key guys away and now to see what Kale and, and you know uh, David uh, David Taylor and Ed Ruth and uh, you know guys like you know. Um, um, James English comes to mind to me, man. It, you know, well, English is a great one, and, and uh, Brown, and you know, but but re what I would really say is that the ability to have these freshmen, and you know, Ruth and, and Taylor are amongst those freshmen, if you will, looking back four years, right? That would step in the lineup and make it to the, and meet you know Nico Megalutis and so forth, um, step into the lineup and make it to the NCAA finals as a freshman. That's a different breed. I mean, you know, what we're seeing, I think, now is a different, you know, d different breed of kid who is prepared in such a level, um, you know, that that has made it, you know, put us into that that next level, which you know is now the reason why I think we're winning NCAA titles. We're getting kids to score as freshmen. You know, if you think about the dynamics of Penn State, if I was the first four-time um, All-American. You know, all-American from Penn State in you were 30 years. You ago. were the first. Yes. Time? I don't know that. So if I was then, and that was 30, you know, 30 years ago, let's call it, in the wrestle and the you know, and over that period, I think we've probably had five or six, you know, somewhere along that round, you know, line. That's over 30 years. In four years, we've got you know probably five guys that will be four-time All-Americans. So we've doubled our production of four-time All-Americans in the last five years that Kale's been our coach. Amazing. Yeah. Looking at a guy like, uh, you know, one of your college teammates, Tim Flynn, Coach of the Year. Wow. How does that make you feel? Oh, awesome. I was uh, so happy for Flynnie. I saw Tim, Coach Flynn, last night. And, um, you know, it's just amazing on two fronts. I mean, I think the reason he was Coach of the Year is because he's working with you know, when you look at the Big Ten and you look at the, the top 10 finishers, it's either Big Ten or Pac-12 that has finished, you know, in the top 10 this year. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm estimating because I don't know it off by Big heart. Big 12. Big 12, I'm sorry. Um, and so, um, Flinny is, you know, his team finished fifth. I mean, when you look at, you know, a team like Edinburgh with the resources they have, the amount of scholarships they have, which are roughly half of everybody else, finishing fifth in the NCAAs, it really speaks to you know, something unique about what's being accomplished at that school. And, and I would argue, given his track record of finishing in the top 10 over the last 15 years, I think he's finished 10 times in the top 10 or in the top 15 over the last 15 years, he is doing something exceptional as a coach. All right, million dollar question. I have to ask everybody from Ohio or Pennsylvania, best high school wrestling state. You're an Ohio guy. Yeah, I'm an Ohio guy. Ohio I mean, State look, champ. Right. Um, you know, I would say that, you know, Pennsylvania had 63, I guess, uh, people qualify for the NCAAs here. Ohio had 29. 29 for yeah. Ohio? No, we ended up with more than that. We started think, with 29. I think it was 33. I thought They that, doubled our number almost. Right. So I would say, look, statistically, it's it's fair to say that Pennsylvania cares an awful lot about wrestling. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I went to Penn State is, you know, they had a, a gym full of fans, you know, 35 years ago when I was there, right? So, and they still do, and all the events are sold out. Um, so Pennsylvania cares a lot about wrestling, and there's a lot of great wrestling schools in Pennsylvania. Um, what I would say, though, is from a high school perspective, I think that, you know, there, there aren't uh, many high schools in the country better than Ohio. You know, Ohio's got, you know, St. Ed's clearly that's there, St. Paris Graham that's now produced, uh, you know, a number of, the, you know, top, top athletes in the country. You know, the Stevers from, you know, their, you know, their Monroe location. Monroeville, Monroe Maslin Perry. Right. And we could sit here and name 20 schools out that are just, they've got great traditions yeah. and they always got nails kids. Yeah. Walsh Jesuit, so forth. I, I would have to say that, you know, trying to be, you know, objective about it, because I'm, you know, I've spent a lot of my life in Pennsylvania now. Pennsylvania cares a lot about wrestling, so does Ohio. Um, and there's a lot of other great states around us, New Jersey, New York, that, that care an awful lot about it too. So, uh, Illinois. Uh, but I would say that, um, you know, I think from a high school perspective, I don't know that there's a finer high school base. Than, uh, than Ohio. All right, Greg, you got anything else for me? I, I think we cover the National Registry. That's Definitely. About what about, are you ready to catch this flight? 
<laughs> ready to go home? Yeah. I'm ready to go home. Hey, I'll tell you what. I thought your boy e. Miller did a great job. You know, yeah, it's exciting, I, right? I I'll tell you what. If we can get guys like that to wrestle, you know, to their ability. I mean, I think he just sort of, you know, was in the meat grinder, you know, and at the for the third and fourth position, and you know, sort of uh, let his guard down a little bit. But I think that that the kids that will wrestle, uh, and and I look this is from a guy that you know managed matches. You know, a little bit more than wrestle, so I can speak to that. You didn't just go out there and catch and sink everybody and make up moves uh, like he does. I wasn't the Taylor. I wasn't the <laughs> Miller. You know, that was. Uh, but 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 I would say that that that's what makes our sport interesting. It's the guys that are on the you know on the tails of you know sort of the uh, the stylistic things that that they're doing uh, that make it really fun and interesting to watch. So he was a great you know along with a lot of guys that that did that in this tournament. Ness <laughs> Ness is fun. There you go. Ness is fun. You know, Taylor's obviously Rue. You know, guys that are that are putting it out every match. You know, and, and you know, Jaden Cox. You know, I can think of a, a few around those weight you know weight classes. And if you look at the Ohio State guy that from Maslin, that I think had all the talent to do it. And you know, we've got one Morgan McIntosh of Penn State. They've got the talent. And when those guys start to to bring their you know their game and hone in on what they're really good at. I don't think, you know, I think it's going to continue to be exciting for years to come. I mean, it's just fun to watch those guys.